Hi everyone, today is 30th of January and I welcome you all to the newspaper discussion classes. In this particular session, we are going to cover all important articles from Hindu newspaper, but articles along with that from Down to Earth, Times of India, PIB also would be taken which are relevant for our examination. In this particular session, we are going to cover these particular article for mains examination. We are going to cover these particular article for prelims examination and in mapping, we are going to take today mapping of France because recently French president visited India for Republic Day celebrations. Also guys, in this session, we do MCQ questions based on current affairs and quotation for essay as well as GS paper. So, let's get started with the session. But first of all, let's take the answers for MCQ questions that we took yesterday. So, yesterday, we took this particular... So, yesterday, we have taken this question. Consider the following statement with regard to Reunion Island. It is an overseas territory of Britain. No, it is not of Britain. It is of France. Recently, we have seen that it was mentioned in the article also. It is located in the east of Maldives. No, it is not located in the east of Maldives. I will show you the direction also. So, choose the correct option. What is the correct option? None of the above D. Okay, none of the above D. Okay, now if we see location of, if we see location of Maldives, then you can just see here. Fine. Yes, you can just see here that here we have Maldives and here we have the Reunion Island. So, it is not situated in the east, it is situated towards the southern side or towards the southwest. Now, moving on and uh, next question that we took, let's take the next question. Okay. Fine. Question number two. Which of the following site has been designated as the Ramsar site? So, this article also we have discussed. So, right option is all of the above D. And then third question, consider the following statement with regard to script. So, we have seen that Grantham inscriptions were there in the news. So, on that line, question has been framed. Brahmi script was first... Uh, Brahmi script has been used in India to write Sanskrit. It is correct. In past, Brahmi script, uh, Brahmi script has been used. In ancient India, Granth script was employed in Jammu and Kashmir to write Sanskrit originating from the Dogra script. No, it is wrong. We have seen that this script was prevalent more in Tamil Nadu region. So, what is the right answer? Right option, uh, right answer is A, one only. Okay. So, this is about the questions that we have taken yesterday. Now, let us take the today's question. So guys, please write, uh, please mark these right answers and leave your right answers in the comment box. So first question for today, which of the following wildlife sanctuary is located in Arunachal Pradesh? So choose the correct options. Okay, choose the correct options. Fine. Then next question, consider the following statement with respect to PM Young Achiever Scholarship Award Scheme, PM Ishashvi. So it covers OBC, EBC and DNT. It includes study abroad at uh, abroad program at academic institution it is covered under the ministry of education so please choose the right option and leave your answer in the comment box then next is consider the following statement with respect to the silk we have seen that it uh, tassar silk was in news so india ranks 6 globally in terms of silk production below bangladesh among the four varieties tassar type accounts for 70% production karnataka is the leading producer of skills silk in india so identify the right option and leave your answer in the comment box and let's see that how many of the questions you get correct so that is about it and now let's start with the discussion of the articles okay and uh, first guys we start with the gs quotation that you can be used you can use in your essay as well as mains examination questions so today we are going to take quotation from mahatma gandhi gandhi ji says that the rich must live more simply so that the poor may simply live so rich people once they have excess they should not be driven by excess show of excess consumption self-loathing, self-gratification. Rather, rich people should maintain a simple lifestyle and excess wealth that they have. They should be used in providing the basic necessities to the people. Even Gandhiji's idea of theory of trusteeship is based on the same belief that the people having wealth should not behave like the owners of the wealth. Rather, they should behave as the trustees of the wealth. So, you can use this particular idea in essay paper as well as in GS paper number 4, Ethics. Okay? And guys, uh, 
तो आई इट इज़ अ डिलाइट टू टेल यू दैट टुमारो वी आर लॉन्चिंग अवर राउंड अप ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर बैच विच इज डेडिकेटेड करंट अफेयर्स बैच फॉर अपकमिंग प्रिलिम्स दैट इज प्रिलिम्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर मॉड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू कवर एंटायर वन ईयर्स करंट अफेयर्स इन थीम बेस्ड मैनर वेयर करंट अफेयर्स इन थीम सच एज इकोनॉमी एनवायरमेंट सोशल जस्टिस फाइन पॉलिटी आर्ट एंड कल्चर विल बी डन also here we are going to take the here we are going to cover indian express down to earth the hindu pib all the important news that were there in these important in on these important platforms would be covered also every class will uh, be followed by mcq test so that you can assess that how well you have learned also you will be provided the pdf notes which will be the most comprehensive one catering to your exam needs you can enroll in the batch and for enrollment link is given in the description box in pinned comment also link is given okay or you can visit the website www.sahilsaini.net and there you can enroll classes will be live but recording would, would also be available post class so let's start with the first article populism does not help public health this particular article is important for gs paper number 2 social justice gs paper number 2 social justice now guys what actually has happened in this article is talking about that how sanitation and some small things are way more important for improving public health than big ticket expenditure such as building hospitals etc now article says that in past india has has done some impressive uh, india has achieved some imp important landmarks in health for example what we have done we have we have to a considerable fact we have preventing we are preventing smallpox fine though it has been said that the smallpox have been completely eradicated but still surveillance is going on also what we have we have done we have fought with the polio and we have eradicated polio also then neonatal tetanus measles all these particular diseases we have eradicated why because of improved sanitation by improved cleanliness okay now what happens when we talk about political leaders often in order to improve the health they are announcing that they will be coming with new hospitals sometimes the subsidized treatments are being announced sometimes what is being provided that even in private hospitals you can go and you can avail this particular test or this particular treatment so largely big ticket expenditure of schemes they are being announced by government in the name of health but politicians are forgetting that basic sanitation cleanliness can also improve health to a considerable to a considerable number now here case study of dengue has been given now when we talk about dengue we see this particular thing that it is a vector born disease and we find this particular thing that every year there are cases of dengue that increases in a particular season and it has symptomatic treatments there is no definitive cure of dengue but what government does every year they will be coming out with the relief camps they will establish some hospitals or, or some makeshift hospitals to tackle rising number of cases but they have not invested much in learning that what are the vector bionomics how this particular disease is transmitted and how the transmission at root cause can be reduced or to develop effective vaccine we are not investing money here rather we are investing money in establishing relief camps in erecting the hospital erecting the temporary hospitals to deal with the surge okay it has been provided now it has provided that the when you establish relief camp when you establish hospital it gives you more political mileage it gives you more political visibility so therefore their expenditure is done these things are the long term things whose impact will be seen after 2050 20, 15 20 years so here investment is not being done now civil servant john bor in 1946 wrote this particular thing that there will be huge economic and human cost if we neglect the preventive health care measures okay even if we talk about the present time india is going through the window of demographic dividend in fact 2020 to 2040 is the golden window of demographic dividend for india in these particular 20 years we have to reap the full potential of our young population but when people are dying because of dengue typhoid etc we need to be very much concerned and health and sanitation will be very much important here now recently government come out with the poshan abhiyan that is prime minister's overarching scheme for holistic nutrition under this poshan abhiyan 
we are focusing on certain indicators for example reduce stunting by 2% reduce undernutrition by 2% anemia by 3% and low birth weight by 2% every year these are the targets that have been taken but still even though scheme is going on but fifth national family health survey has shown that much improvement has not happened according to the fifth national family health survey it has been provided that 35.5% of the children under the age of 5 were still stunted. 35.5% children are stunted. 32.1% children are underweight. Okay. And the anemia, anemia has actually increased. And it provides that anemia increased from 58.6% to 67%. Okay. Fine. It is in the children between 6 to 59 months. It has increased from 58 to 67.1% and in women it has increased from 54.1% to 59.1%. So though so much of expenditure is being done but much improvement has not happened. Now article provides this particular thing that what are way forward that is needed in this particular direction. Number one way forward is behavioral change is important to manage public health challenge. For example if we maintain hygiene if we wash our hands frequently many of the infectious diseases could be avoided in behavioral change adopting diversified diet okay ensuring nutrition of the child in the early age this is some very low cost intervention that can help second we have there are no specialized course such as the public health engineering public health engineering now when we talk about public health engineering it happens to be a specialized domain which can improve the efficacy and efficiency of existing health enterprises but we don't offer such kind of uh, such kind of uh, high uh, such kind of education uh, educational courses also public health is not just about treating disease it is about preventing the diseases and for preventing the diseases we need to bring doctors sociologists scientists environmentalists together and they should form the policy now guys understand this particular thing what has happened there is a lot of politicization that has happened in the health now you see this thing when we talk about india india as a space sector is something which has scaled a lot of heights fine why because in space sector interference of politicians have been very much less okay now what we need to do we need to divorce the health from the political interference also and for this particular thing it has been provided that health ministry is directly needed to be placed health ministry is directly to be placed under the chief minister or the prime minister because by that they will get more autonomy and nitty gritty uh, and political interference and nitty gritties unnecessary details will also not happen also it has been provided that decision making in healthcare needs to be divorced from the short term political gains often just for short term political gains decisions are being made for example just bring a new hospital or arouse this new scheme because it will be visible today so rather than short term thinking, long term thinking, investing in proper sanitation, learning the patterns of the diseases and bringing the vaccines, initiating funding for that is more important. So this is something that has been provided in this entire article. So that is about it and now moving to next article. So pros and cons of simultaneous election. Pros and cons of simultaneous election. This particular article we are going to see with respect to GS paper number 2 constitutional issues issues related to polity issues related to polity okay so basically uh, guys you might have seen that simultaneous election has been in news so many of the times recently what has happened in fact government of india constituted the high level committee so what happened recently government of india constituted the high level committee under shri ramnath singh kovin who has been the former president of India and this particular committee has been given the task to study feasibility of simultaneous election. Now simultaneous election runs on the idea of one nation one election which provides that there should be one election for both parliament as well as state legislative assembly. Now we see this particular thing that every year one or other state legislative assembly is having their election. Now in this 2024 parliamentary election are coming. So every year there is some of the other state that is at election or parliament which is going to the election. So it is has been said that India is constantly in the election mode and there are a lot of challenges because of this particular thing. So therefore the idea of uh, simultaneous election is being explored. A minute. So therefore the idea of simultaneous election is being explored. Now what is simultaneous elections? Conducting elections of conducting elections of Lok Sabha 
स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबलीज एंड लोकल बॉडीज टूगेदर लोकल बॉडीज टूगेदर नाउ वेन वी टॉक अबाउट गाइज इलेक्शन साइकिल ऑफ नाइनटीन फिफ्टी टू नाइनटीन फिफ्टी सेवन सिक्सटी टू एंड सिक्सटी सेवन At that point of a time, Lok Sabha and Legislative Assembly elections were held simultaneously. Lok Sabha and Legislative Assembly's elections were held simultaneously. But what happened? Since 1967, this particular synchronization has broken. Why? Because uh, we see this particular thing that after 1967, we find that Lok Sabha has been dissolved prematurely on seven occasions. On seven occasions, and we see then after that the state legislative assembly also. Sometime they came under president rule. Sometime premature dissolution happened. Okay, so because of that, this synchronization has broken. And in 2019, when the last Lok Sabha elections happened, only there were four states. Only there were the four states that had election along with Lok Sabha. Only four states had election along with Lok Sabha. Now, what will be benefits of introducing simultaneous election? So there are multiple benefits. Benefit number one: it has been said that there are just four thousand crore rupees that are being spent only on election of Lok Sabha. Apart from that, state legislative assembly they have their expenditure, and depending on the size of a state, election uh, expenditure will vary. so thousands of crore rupees are being spent on election this is one this is one also guys it has been provided that apart from that political parties also they have to do expenditure and this expenditure is huge this expenditure is huge so therefore if we will have once once a time election this particular expenditure would be saved because you are anyhow conducting elections the same uh, 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 same evm can be used for the state legislative election elections also the staff is being mobilized for parliamentary elections that staff can also facilitate the legislative assembly elections also so cost will be saved money will be saved also it has been provided that every year five to six state elections are happening now during that particular time political parties ministers prime minister chief minister they are occupied and it is being said that a lot of legislative time that they could have a given in policy making it is diverted to political campaign which is a huge wastage also it has been provided that every year when elections are going on model code of conduct is applied model code of conduct prevails for 45 to 60 days and during the model code of conduct no new scheme can be announced no new government policy can be brought and it also impacts the developmental work it also impacts the developmental work okay then next is administrative machinery also gets negatively impacted now when we talk about administrative machinery we find this particular thing that government employees they have to be stationed on election duty also we find this particular thing that paramilitary forces paramilitary forces they are withdrawn from their locations and the members of paramilitary forces they are given the security work for the elections so because of that a lot of challenge comes on administrative machinery so therefore having simultaneous election will save on all these particular problems but in simultaneous election there are certain challenges there are certain problems what are these problems problem number 1 it has been said it has been said that it might it might have some negative implications on federal design of india now you see this particular thing if lok sabha and state legislative elections are happening simultaneously it has been said that lok sabha national issues will overshadow local issues okay cult at the national level will overshadow the local issues and local leaders okay and because of that it has been provided that what will be done it will be detrimental to the federal spirit of the country and federal spirit of the country is the part of the basic structure of the constitution so this is going to be a constitutional challenge the next challenge that comes here is that basically elections they are also effective feedback mechanism every year when if, if there, there are the elections through elections government can give the feedback even to the national government that okay we are not liking your policy or we are liking your policy so election is a feedback mechanism and because elections are coming government has to reach to the voter and therefore it fulfills a very basic aspect of democracy that is accountability but if we will not have these simultaneous election that feedback mechanism would be lost that feedback mechanism would be lost then next thing that comes here in this particular direction is that if we need to bring simultaneous election if we need to bring the simultaneous election then we need to bring certain constitutional changes constitutional changes now when we talk about the constitutional amendment act so as per 
द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया लोकसभा एज वेल एज स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबलीज दे हैव फिक्स टेन्योर दैट इज अ टेन्योर ऑफ फाइव ईयर्स हाउ एवर दे कैन बी डिजोल्व प्री मेच्योरली इफ द गवर्नमेंट लूजेज द कॉन्फिडेंस इन द हाउस ऑल्सो इफ प्रेजिडेंट रूल अंडर आर्टिकल थ्री फिफ्टी सिक्स इज इम्पोज इन अ स्टेट देन ऑल्सो द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर स्टेट कैन बी टेकन ओवर बट इफ यू नीड टू ब्रिंग द फाइव ईयर नाउ सी इफ साइमल्टेनियस इलेक्शन इज देयर then what we need to provide we need to provide that lok sabha as well as a state legislative assembly they should dissolve or they should uh, they should dissolve after 5 years only in between there should be no dissolution so what we need to do we need to amend article 83 85 172 174 that deal with the duration and dissolution okay also in this particular capacity law commission law commission in 1999 in this particular direction law commission just a minute okay so law commission in 1999 parliamentary standing committee fine in 2015 they have given their recommendations that how simultaneous elections can be carried in little bit of a smooth manner so what recommendations have been given let's understand these recommendation first recommendation it is that election of lok sabha election of lok sabha and half of the state legislative assembly can be clubbed together okay so lok sabha and uh, half of the sls and then other half of the sls okay so it has been provided that let's say in 2024 lok sabha and half of the state assembly elections can be there and after 2.5 years other half of the state assembly elections can be there so rather than clubbing them them at once we can bifurcate it in two parts fine by that what will happen it will be relatively more easy than having one very big exercise also it has been provided that see what happens is many many number of times no confidence motion is floated in lok sabha and state legislative assembly and after that no confidence motion if nobody else is there to prove the majority then the government falls and new elections are to be conducted so it has been provided that no confidence motion in lok sabha as well as legislative assembly should be mandatorily accompanied by the confidence motion by the confidence motion that if government will fall some other okay if government will fall then other alternative government should also be proven by the majority so no confidence motion should be accompanied by the confidence motion okay because if that will happen then the new elections are not to be conducted however sometimes let's say sometimes let's say there is no option to bring new government and elections have to be conducted elections have to be conducted so it has been provided that this newly constituted assembly should have the term of remaining period only should have the term of remaining period only let's say two period through sorry two years three years should not be given the term of complete five years then next thing that comes here is that is that we have seen that we have seen that there are uh, also it has been provided that if resignation has happened or death has happened then or if by elections have to be conducted these by elections should be clubbed together and conducted once in a year once in a year not every other month by election should be there then we have examples of south africa sweden germany which have fixed tenure for their legislative assembly and when we talk about south africa in south africa simultaneous elections are happening at the gap of every 5 year so we need to learn from their experiences from their case studies and only with the help of a consensus this particular thing should be brought so that is all guys about this particular article now moving on and uh, let's move to next article early nutrition impacts cognitive development early nutrition impacts cognitive development so this particular article we are going to see again with respect to gs paper number 2 social justice gs paper number 2 social justice so let's take the article now basically guys it has been provided that when we talk about stunting when we talk about stunting stunting along with height also impacts cognitive development of a child now what is a stunting what is a stunting just a minute so basically guys stunting is adverse ratio between between age and height age and height so for a particular age a person needs to have a particular height but if for that particular corresponding age height is not there then this particular situation is referred to as a stunting now stunting is not only a physical limitation but it is also 
a limitation on one's cognitive development. It has been said that we need to learn in more deeper ways that how the stunting impacts the low and middle income countries, particularly the low income countries. Now, it has been provided, this, uh, this has been provided that when we talk about, when we talk about the research on early human capital investment. Now, first of all, what is human capital investment? Human capital investment is spending money on health, spending money on education, spending money on skilling. Because of you, because if you skill person, you uh, spend on the health of that person, education of that person. In the long run, in the long run, that particular person will be able to contribute positively in the economy and human capital development will happen. Human capital development will happen. So, for human capital development, early human capital investments are to be done and that investment is in the form of a nutrition, education, etc. Now, it has been provided that if we invest, let's say in the nutrition, fine, we find that a person develops better cognitive understanding, if sees the cognitive development and that cognitive development can be seen by his performance in mathematics, reading, vocabulary. Okay, so what I am saying, if you spend adequately in the nutrition of a child in the childhood, then later in the age, his cognitive development will happen and will be able to perform on these particular tests. And we see this particular thing through many studies, but it is not much comprehensive. A very comprehensive study has been done in Ethiopia and Peru, in Ethiopia and Peru. And according to these studies that have been conducted in Ethiopia and Peru, they provide this particular thing that stunting really impacts cognitive development. And this particular study finds that if good nutrition is provided, then one's working memory can be improved. But if not provided, then one's working memory might be negatively impacted. Also, it has been provided that, also it has been provided that good nutrition along with improving the working memory also impacts one's vocabulary development, one's vocabulary development. And these particular benefits, they compound over the years, they compound over the years. Also, it has been provided that women's height, women's height and educational attainment are strong predictors of child stunting in India. If women's height is not stunted and if women is educated, then the child stunting will also not happen. Okay, so these are some of the correlations that have been there. Now, further article provides that when we talk about India, guys, there is a huge stunting that we have seen in India. And if you remember, previous article was on the same line. So if you see here, we find this particular thing that according to National Family Health Survey 5, 35.5% children under the age of 5 were stunted. So stunting is at 35.5%. So this high stunting will be going to impact the cognitive development of child who are the future of India. Now what government is doing in this particular direction? So government has made certain considerable investments. And what investments government has done? First of all, government has come out with the portion abhiyan. Ocean Abhiyan and Integrated Child Development Service Scheme in which supplementary nutrition is being provided to the children and specifically districts with highest burden of stunting, they are being focused, they are being focused, okay. Then the second is that, second is that we are working on sanitation. According to a Spears study of 2013, it has been provided that the sanitation also contributes in the stunting. If proper sanitation is not there, then the pathogens that are there in the environment, they impact the nutrition absorption capacity of an individual. So therefore, sanitation can also improve the health indicators, including the stunting can be also be improved. So it has been provided that, it has been provided that by sanitation, we can reduce the incidence of diarrhea as well as stunting. And for this particular thing, we have deliberately, de dedicatedly come out with the Jal Jeevan mission which will provide by 2024 functional household tap water connection and by clean water some of the infectious diseases, diarrhea etc can be reduced. Also through Swach Bharata mission, we are improving the sanitation, we are improving the sanitation. So these are some of the efforts that we have taken in this particular direction. Also it has been provided, also it has been provided that some other strategies have also been adopted by the government. Number one, Number one, promotion of breastfeeding, promotion of breastfeeding for two years, for two years. Now understand this particular thing guys, that when we talk about the mother's milk, mother's milk has many of the essential nutrients, which not only give the nutrition to a child, but also it provides the immunity to the child against a lot of things. So for two years, breastfeeding should be promoted. And for that, government has come out with the mass scheme. 
government has come out with the ma scheme that is mother's absolute affection program mother's absolute affection program ma okay also what is happening mothers are being educated about the importance of breastfeeding through the technology through the seminars through videos etc also as the children grow as children grow then the ch parents are to be educated that their diets are to be diversified particularly after 6 months and with that diversified diets stunting etc can also be reduced also complementary feeding should also be given to the child to substitute to substitute also it has been provided that anganwadi now anganwadis play a very important role anganwadis play a very important role okay uh, anganwadis play a very important role in ensuring nutrition for a child and every anganwadi it has been provided and needs to be supported by one additional worker because if one additional worker is given to an anganwadi then by that extra staff by that extra staff fine uh, more impact can be created and we have here the case study of tamil nadu fine so that is all guys about this particular thing i hope that you have understood it and now we will move to the next article okay so guys these particular articles are specifically oriented towards the prelims examination and the first article that we are going to take here in this particular direction is a dogri folk dance is a dogri folk dance now why dogri folk dance is a news because recently recently uh Romalo Ram, Romalo Ram, who is one of a prolific and who is one of an important uh, Dogri folk dancer, has been given Padma Shri Award. Has been given Padma Shri Award. So, therefore, Dogri dance is in news. Now, when we talk about Dogri dance, this particular dance is a folk dance in Jammu and Kashmir region and it is performed into the Dugar region. Dugar region. So, this particular region is Dugar region where we have Jammu, Udhampur, Samba, Kathua, Pine. Fine, Sialkot, fine, fine, Riyasi, all this region is the Dugar region. And in this particular region, this particular region, Dongri dance is performed. Dongri dance is performed. Now, when we talk about the Dongri dance, okay, now this particular dance is performed by a group of artists. The main performer, main performer will dance and will sing. And the other performers will sit, other performers will sit and will provide the beats of drums and chimta to performer. Also, this particular dance is largely performed on social functions, social gatherings. And this particular dance is performed while wearing colorful dress, dresses, colorful dresses. Okay. And also, there are some other important dances of Jammu, fine Jammu and Kashmir region, which I have provided here. For example, Pumani, Jagran, Choki, Chhaja, Kudda, Hirna. And then there are Bhaktan, Ras, Chandroli. These are the drama. These are the dramas. And above one, these are the dances. So please note it down in your art and culture notes because in this particular direction, questions can be asked. Now, moving on to the next article. Moving on to the next article. Okay. Then, so here we see that Dalma Wildlife Sanctuary is in news. So this article is from Times of India. Dalma Wildlife Sanctuary to offer canopy walk facility by mid-February. Okay. So canopy walk facility will be provided at the height of around 25 feet, which will enhance the experience of visitors visiting there. And in a better way, they will be able to see visually the wildlife flora fauna in dalma so therefore the dalma wildlife sanctuary is in news now first of all guys where this dalma wildlife sanctuary is located so dalma wildlife sanctuary it is located in jharkhand it is located in jharkhand around the villages of dalma fine okay now here so here we have jharkhand okay now here we have the dalma wildlife sanctuary dalma wildlife sanctuary in its north uh, dalma wildlife sanctuary then here we have the Palka, Palkot Wildlife Sanctuary, it is towards the western side. It is towards the western side. Then we have, then we have Mohandanar wild, Wolf Wildlife Sanctuary. Okay. And here you can see that other wildlife sanctuaries are also mentioned. So, this is the location of Dalma Wildlife Sanctuary. This is the location of Dalma Wildlife Sanctuary. Now, when we talk about Dalma Wildlife Sanctuary, it is located near the city of Jamshedpur. Near the city of Jamshedpur around Dalma Hills on Chota Nagpur Plateau. Dalma Hills on Chota Nagpur Plateau. Now, word Dalma or the name Dalma Hills 
or dalma wildlife sanctuary it comes from dalma mai it comes from dalma mai which is the uh, which is the goddess who is revered by the people here locally from there the name comes now when we talk about the forest of the dalma sanctuary this particular forest lies in the catchment of the subrnekha river subrnekha river and dima lake dima lake okay often questions on the rivers or water bodies in the protected areas have been asked also when we talk about vegetation of dalma wildlife sanctuary the vegetation is it has a dry peninsular sal and another dry mixed deciduous forest okay and when we talk about fauna that is the animals we find here that it has a considerable population of elephant barking deer wild boar giant squirrel porcupine pangolin and sloth bear so this is the flora and fauna diversity of dalma wildlife sanctuary then moving on moving on after that next is nitrogen hypoxia nitrogen hypoxia so what has happened recently in usa usa is alabama one of a prisoner has been executed has been given capital punishment death penalty through the nitrogen hypoxia so what is this nitrogen hypoxia let's understand this first of all guys what is hypoxia hypoxia is a condition when a person dies because of the lack of oxygen lack of oxygen now what is done in the nitrogen hypoxia so in nitrogen hypoxia pure nitro sorry yes so what is done in nitrogen hypoxia so in nitrogen hypoxia pure nitrogen gas pure nitrogen gas or concentrated nitrogen gas would be pumped in the body of a person so what will be done a person will be made to wear a mask this particular mask will have nitrogen gas supply and that particular person will inhale nitrogen gas and as this particular person will inhale nitrogen gas the person will eventually pass out because of the lack of oxygen and as a person will pass out because of the lack of oxygen it is the state of hypoxia and gradually a person might die gradually a person will die so recently what has happened in usa in usa one of a prisoner who was on a death row who was on a death row was recently was recently uh, executed by using the nitrogen hypoxia that is by 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 uh, putting pure nitrogen gas in his body in his body now this is relatively a new alternative to other forms of capital punishment such as lethal injection that is given electrocution that happens often the people are they hanged fine now these particular methods they involve a lot of pain it has been seen that even when the lethal injection is being given for a minutes or sometimes even till half an hour or one hour a person is in a lot of pain same goes with electrocution same goes with hanging now first of all when we talk about capital punishment around the world it is widely debated issue fine ethicist they are divided on one hand basically the virtue ethicist and deontologist they provide this particular thing that you cannot give death penalty because deontologists provide that way are always important yes a person did a crime that is wrong but how to but taking the life of that particular person is not a right way it is not a right process so there is ethical debates that are going on and around this particular thing also the world over people have been divided that whether it is morally allowed or not on one hand it is said that it should be morally allowed because it involves less pain it involves less pain compared to electrocution or hanging etc okay so this is about it now guys when we talk about when we talk about india what is the india situation on this thing india neither has abandoned death penalty nor india gives death penalty in very liberal way india maintains rarest of the rare doctrine rarest of the rare doctrine and as per the rarest of the rare doctrine in exceptional cases the death penalty will be given and as of now supreme court has given that there are the three rarest of the rare cases where death penalty can be given number 1 is rape leading to death death number 2 is fake encounters and number 3 is honor killings so in these cases death penalty can be given okay and when we talk about the rarest of rare doctrine it was given by the supreme court in bachchan singh case okay now when we talk about nitrogen nitrogen gas was used in this particular case so nitrogen it is a colorless 
it is colorless orderless gas and it makes a major portion of the atmosphere okay and it is also very much important for plant growth okay and when we talk about nitrogen it is used in the chemical industry because for making fertilizers nitric acid nylon dye, dyes and explosives also nitrogen provides unreactive atmosphere so therefore uh, it is used in the food food preservation also for example when you buy a packet of chips that packet of chips it is inflated so what which air is used there nitrogen is used in that packet of chips so that it has a longer shelf life liquid nitrogen is also used as a refrigerant refrigerant right so these are the other usages of nitrogen and question on this particular line can be asked then moving on next delhi high court has affirmed the constitutional validity of the sapinda marriages sapinda marriages now what is this sapinda marriage this is only we need to know for our examination so basically guys you see that when we talk about the hindu marriage act hindu marriage act now within the hindu marriage act sapinda marriages are not allowed what are the sapinda marriages sapinda marriages are the marriages between individuals who are closely related through their common lineal ancestors now it has been said that sapinda marriages that is marriage between two people who are closely linked with their ancestors it is a kind of an incest it is a kind of a marriage between brother and sister so therefore sapinda marriages are not allowed as under the hindu marriage act certain people questioned that how you can restrict marriage between the two people it is their individual choice how you can restrict so this matter reached to the delhi high court and met and delhi high court said that such restriction can be imposed such restriction can be imposed okay so sapinda relationships ex, uh, are the relations between the people who are closely related related with the common ancestor and sapinda relations extends up to third generation through the mother's line and up to fifth generation through the father's father's line so if you are related then the marriages are not allowed okay then alpine ibex alpine ibex is in news fine so here we have one article from down to earth talking about the alpine ibex so basically guys uh, why alpine ibex is in news now alpine ibex is a particular type of goat it is a particular type of goat and this goat is found in europe central asia as well as in india now when we talk about the alpine ibex on iucn on iucn they have been given the status of least concern now understand this particular thing that these alpine ibex which are in europe alpine ibex are found in europe now they are found in european alp mountain region now these particular goats they are they are diurnal they are diurnal what is diurnal diurnal means that they are active during the day they do their hunting grazing everything during the day now they are turning from diurnal to nocturnal now nocturnal are those animals which are active during the night so from diurnal they are changing to nocturnal now a question comes that why they are changing to nocturnal now understand it is because that temperatures have increased in europe because of high temperature now it is not possible for them to go out and graze during the day time so therefore they are coming out in the night but when they are coming out in the night they are becoming vulnerable to predators like wolves now understand this thing over hundreds and thousands of years they have adapted themselves to fight with the predators etc fine but now all those mechanisms will be lost so it will have a negative consequence on their foraging grazing activity on their anti predator behavior overall reproduction as well as the survival rate okay so this is something that has happened now when we talk about these ibexes they are found in europe okay and also one more very peculiar thing is there if you see male and female their physiology is little bit different now female they have shorter horns but males they have curvy and much longer horns male they have curvy and much longer horns compared to the females compared to the females so they are found in they are found in europe alpine region russia in russia there are siberian ibex in india we have himalayan ibex in india we have himalayan ibex now when we talk about the ibex in india himalayan ibex they are largely found in the trans himalayan region and ladakh jammu and kashmir and himachal pradesh ladakh j and k himachal pradesh and and uh, and the uh, trans himalayan region okay so that is about it 
Now guys, let's take the mapping entry for today. So today we are going to take mapping entry or mapping of France. Why? Because recently Emmanuel Macron, president of France, has visited India. So therefore, France and related important mappings we are going to see. First of all guys, when we talk about France, who are the neighbors of France? Who are the neighbors of France? Okay. So here you can see France. And when we talk about the neighbors of the France, we have Belgium. Then we have Luxembourg. Then we have Germany. Okay. Then we have Switzerland. We have Italy. Then we have Andorra and Spain. Okay, Andorra. So Andorra is a very small country in uh, Europe. So they are the mem uh, they are the neighbors of France. Now here you can see Corsica. Corsica. So Corsica is a territory of France only. And actually France has lot of no uh, lot of territories even overseas such as the Indian Ocean. Okay, so again, let's see the neighbors and you will get a better understanding of their neighbors in this particular map. So here we can see that we have this one. Here you can see that we have Belgium here. Then here, small boundaries being made by Luxembourg. Then this one is Germany. So Belgium, Luxembourg and Germany, BLG. BLG. Then here we have Switzerland. Then here we have Italy. So Switzerland, Italy. Okay, Corsica is the part of France. Okay, then we have Spain here and Andorra is also here. Andorra is not mentioned in this particular map, but Andorra I have already shown you. Then, guys, here towards the north of the France, we have English Channel and towards the south, we have Mediterranean Sea. So, remember it. In the north, we have English Channel and in the south, we have Mediterranean Sea. Towards the west, we have North Atlantic Ocean. We have North Atlantic Ocean and towards the west, it is landlocked. Towards the west, it is landlocked. Sorry, towards the east, it is landlocked. Towards east, it is landlocked. Towards the west, we have North Atlantic Ocean. Towards the north, we have English Channel. And towards the south, we have Mediterranean Sea. Then, when we talk about the geographical features of France, we find this particular thing that we have Jura Mountains. We have here Jura Mountains and here we have Alps. Here we have Alps. Okay. And Pyrenees. Pyrenees. Now, Pyrenees, they are also here towards the southern south on the Spain and Andorra border. Okay. Fine. Now, guys, further, I told you that the France also has many of the overseas territories. Okay. And because of these overseas territories, France has a considerable presence in Indian Ocean also. And therefore, India and France are collaborating for Indo Pacific strategy. Now, here, if we talk about Indo Pacific, particularly Mayotte, Reunion, fine, then there are these scattered islands in Indian Ocean, Crosnet Island. Okay, St. Paul and Amsterdam Islands, uh, Amsterdam Island, fine, Kerguelen Island, fine, here we have New Caledonia. Okay, now these are particularly the important islands which France has in, in the Indian Ocean. And guys, when we talk about Reunion Island, Reunion Island, France has specifically allowed India to station their aircrafts in the Reunion Island, in Reunion Island. Okay, then French Polynesia, Clipperton Island and all these particular territories we have here fine in the Atlantic okay fine Clipperton it is in the Pacific okay now uh, these are all the important aspects of France now guys one very some important points with respect to the France you need to know that Emmanuel Macron has made the this was uh, uh, fine this was his second state visit this was his second state visit and this is the sixth visit by a French leader on Republic Day in India and France becomes the country which have got the maximum number of invites. France is the country which got the maximum number of invites and on 26th of January we have seen one very good article also here fine on India-France relation. Okay. So it is bounded by Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea, Alps and Pyrenees. Okay. All these things already we have seen. Okay. So this is guys all about it. I hope that you have understood about uh, you have understood this article. So with this, we come to an end to this particular session. Guys, I hope that you are liking this particular initiative of ours and you are appreciating the uh, effort that we are putting here. If you have liked it, please do hit the like button. Please do subscribe to the channel and also please ensure that every day questions that we are taking, you are marking those particular questions in the comment boxes. Okay. Also, please do share the initiative with your friends because this initiative is being supported only by 
you guys okay so that is all guys about it and uh, now we'll be meeting tomorrow till then please take care of yourselves thank you so much